Welcome to Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. You can find us at lcara.net, on Facebook, on YouTube, and on Instagram. If you're enjoying the videos we're producing here at Elcara, please help our club out by hitting that subscribe button. Also, give us some feedback on our videos. Click the like button, share with anybody who may find it interesting, and be sure and hit the bell icon to make sure you get notified of the next video release. Yeah, hello folks, this is Chris, KY4CKP, and uh, today we wanted to bring you just kind of a catch-up video on some of the ongoing work for the um, emergency communications trailer. And we start out here by uh, just showing some of the work we've done in the past uh, two or three or four weeks. Uh, we've been redesigning and reapplying uh, some external antenna mounts to the front and the rear of the trailer. We'll be seeing the rear in a little bit. Uh, we had some of these on before. But we've been doing some work on the trailer and uh, wanted to get these back on and uh, at the same time keep them out of the way of the load balancing hitch that we use for the trailer. So we uh, uh, found some uh, Unistrut uh, there at uh, headquarters and uh, just kind of measured up and cut some pieces so that we can mount tubular style uh, masts. Uh, we have some triangular style nested extensible masts. Here's uh, some work on the back. I believe that was one and a half inch uh, unistrut that we found um, mounted on both sides of, of the rear and a couple up in the front. So uh, whatever kind of deployment we may do uh, when we roll up in the field, uh, we're going to have positions we can put up uh, multiple masts, whether it's HF, uh, UHF, VHF, or, or whatever we need to do. So again, just, just showing some of the work, we were putting up the mast, uh, a piece of equipment that um, that we had available to us was a Tar Heel, uh, a nice Tar Heel antenna, and uh, as we'll see, we uh, can mount that using these mounting systems that we created from the front or the rear, and we created a uh, pole to put that on, and we're going to uh, create some blocks we can set the pole into, uh, so even if we're on soft ground, uh, the pole doesn't just dig into the ground. And we also have, of course, the controller for the uh, the Tar Heel. Uh, screwdriver type antenna and we've got uh, that it put in place we've created a bracket for that mounted the bracket uh, near the uh, panel PC that we have uh, in one of the main stations there in the trailer and uh, also did some testing uh, with that we'll see you in a little bit uh, but we got the little bracket fabricated and painted up and, uh, and we have that put in place so we can mount the Tar Heel front or rear depending on our needs and what's going on. The cool thing about the Tar Heel, of course, is it can tune, um, I think, anything from, I know, 10 meters to 160 meters, maybe down to 6 meters. And you don't need a big footprint. You don't have to have a bunch of guidelines. You don't have to have a bunch of radials or anything like that. So let's take a quick listen here. see we're using uh, Little Red, the tractor, uh, to uh, just uh, push the uh, trailer out the back of the barn so we could uh, get that uh, antenna up there. Uh, again, just using a temporary uh, wood block at the bottom, but we're going to create something that we can use full time for this purpose. Again, anytime we might be deployed on soft ground. So we got that tar hill up there, and of course we did put the uh, stinger up on top of it, and uh, as you heard, uh, uh, and made several, uh, had several uh, connections and so forth uh, when we were testing it that day even though it wasn't really in the best location in between all these buildings and everything and this is just kind of showing through the controller the procedure to park the antenna down to its lowest level 
uh, either for transport or potentially for storage, uh, which is typically what uh, we would do with it. So a very simple little procedure to park it down to its shortest uh, extension. The other thing we have in the trailer, uh, if we need it, is an FTM 400, uh, Yaesu, uh, VHF, UHF, which can do crossband. And here you can see we've got it in crossband mode, and we were doing some testing with a very simple mag mount antenna that we can put right up on top of the trailer. But we could also have a taller antenna if we needed uh, a Comet uh, 1 or, or something like that. We could put that up just depending on what kind of coverage area we might need. And we can have walkie-talkies around our deployment site and uh, get a better ability to reach a repeater. Uh, one of the other little projects we've worked on was this little uh, array of LEDs so that we can have some light. So basically when we first were, would walk into the trailer, we've got this little motion sensor. We fabricated a bracket and painted that, got that mounted, and got it hooked in line so that we first walk into the trailer, uh, this light's going to pop on. And so even if it's fairly dark, uh, you would immediately have a little bit of light just about as soon as you open the door and start to enter. Uh, and then you could go in and, and start turning on uh, the main switches and things to get the main lights, uh, whatever you might need, available to you for that. Uh, so that's a simple little project, but it, it's just kind of a quality of life uh, type of thing. And it works works very well. Again, just about as soon as you open the door and certainly take that uh, about a half of a step, uh, it senses that and will kick right on and give you a little bit of light to work on, make sure you're not bumping around into, into things. Now in some of these next uh, photos here, uh, we'll see... Uh, we also did some more electrical work in the trailer, so we, we prepared some uh, conduit and uh, measured and drilled some holes for mounting, uh, ran some additional uh, conduit uh, in the trailer. Uh, we're still kind of fleshing out uh, additional switches and things like that that, that we either need uh, right now or to give us some future capacity later. So this was, again, one of the, uh, the times we've worked on the trailer, putting in some additional wiring, uh, and trying to do a nice, neat, clean job of it, you know, using heat shrink tubing, uh, using the uh, the conduit to uh, not only make the job neater, but uh, really safer and, and more secure to keep wires out of the way and that kind of stuff. So we did that. We added some additional conduit, put in some switches uh, over by this little power distribution point on a, one of our stations, and we've also added a four-gang switch uh, over in the rack, which is uh, on the other side of the trailer. Here you can see the yellow arrow pointing to uh, the additional four gang switches there. And so we've got plenty of expansion room to add in for that kind of stuff. And we're also going to be uh, continuing work on the trailer. So we just wanted to, uh, to bring a few of these things to light, just show the ongoing work of the trailer. And uh, as we continue to do more work, we're going to get some, uh, some pretty snazzy graphics put on the side of the trailer uh, here before too long. And we're going to be hitting an event. Uh, a little bit later uh, in the summer. Summer Nights Cruise event, kind of a, a, a big and, and pretty cool car show. So that's pretty much it for now. We just wanted to catch people up. This is Chris, KY4CKP, for Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association, 73.